Maslow's hierarchy of needs is a well-known theory in psychology that suggests a path to fulfillment and a better life. It's a framework many people have found helpful. In today's video, we're going to explore Maslow's theory and place it in parallel with what Jesus taught his disciples. What can we learn by comparing the two? Are there differences in the paths they offer to finding the good life? And is there any overlap in the ideas they proposed? Let's find out. Hey, it's Andrew, creator and project lead at Into the Harvest. This channel is dedicated to helping you be a disciple and make disciples. So if that's something you're interested in, make sure to subscribe and click the notification bell because every week we're creating videos and resources to help you live and share your faith. Abraham Maslow was a 20th century psychologist. He famously proposed that people are motivated to fulfill innate human needs in a priority order and that doing so culminates in experiencing self-actualization. His theory became known as Maslow's hierarchy. The hierarchy of needs is often visualized as a pyramid with five levels. At the bottom, you have physiological needs such as food, water, and sleep. The next level of needs is for safety and security. And these first two levels are described as basic needs. Level three describes our need for belonging and love. We need friendships, family, and a sense of connection. As those needs are met, we become aware of our need for esteem and want to experience status, recognition, and a feeling of accomplishment in our life and work. The needs in levels three and four are described as psychological needs. At the top of the pyramid is our need for self-fulfillment, and the theory suggests that we experience self-actualization only when we're able to live up to our full potential. Self-actualization happens when we feel we are doing what we believe we were meant to do. In Maslow's hierarchy, each level of needs has to be sufficiently met before a person starts to worry about higher needs and before they can experience the satisfaction of having those higher needs fulfilled. Meaning that if you're starving, all you can think about is how you're going to find food. The higher needs and the higher life fade into the background. Now you can definitely see the logic in Maslow's hierarchy, but how does it compare to what Jesus taught? Jesus taught that his followers belonged to the kingdom of God and that life in the kingdom works differently than life in this world. For instance, in the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus taught his disciples not to worry about what they would eat or drink or what they would wear. When it came to seeking security, he told them, Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal, but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven. It's interesting that Jesus acknowledged that what Maslow called basic needs are real, but he taught his disciples not to worry about them, but to trust that God would provide. All these things the nations eagerly seek, but your Father in heaven knows that you need these things. In a similar way, when it came to psychological needs like belonging and recognition, Jesus gave a counterintuitive path for those in his kingdom. He said that the great men among the nations exercise authority over them, but it is not so among you. Whoever wishes to become great among you shall be your servant. For who is greater, the one who sits at the table or the one who serves him? Isn't it the one who sits at the table? but I am among you as one who serves. Both Maslow and Jesus seem to agree that humans have needs and that experiencing a full life involves having those needs satisfied. What's radical about Jesus is the path he taught his followers they should take to seek the fulfillment of those needs was upside down. You could say his path was the exact opposite of what the world would suggest. And it seems that Jesus himself admitted this freely. He claimed that he had come so people could have life and life to its fullest. But he also taught that the way to find your life is to lose it, and vice versa. Jesus knows we have needs, and he shows us how to find their fulfillment. But he tells us we're going to have to trust God and follow in his footsteps, often in ways that seem to work against our needs being met. This is the upside-down life of following Jesus. And it's why we have to walk by faith and not by sight. Where Maslow's hierarchy is logical, 
The teaching of Jesus is often counterintuitive. Another difference is that Jesus teaches that self-actualization doesn't automatically happen, even when all your needs are met. What does it profit a man to gain the entire world if he loses his soul? It's how you go about seeking fulfillment that makes the difference. Jesus teaches his followers to seek first the kingdom and then promises that everything else will fall into place. Well, what do you think? How does the teaching of Jesus compare with Maslow's hierarchy of needs? Do you see other disagreements or similarities? Let us know in the comments below. And if you like this video, click the thumbs up button and consider sharing it with others. Thanks for watching this Disciple Tips video. We'll see you next week.